Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at loading 223 Remington on the RCBS Pro Chucker 5. I've got my handy custom AR-15 here, which is a carbine length rifle, lightweight, loves shooting it. Uh, I'm going to be loading some ammo that's going to be optimized for this rifle, and we're going to check out our first video loading rifle ammo on the RCBS Pro Chucker 5. Now I got a couple important setup details and notes that I want to share with you and then we're going to be off to full progressive loading. So let's get started. So let's go over the station utilization. RCBS Pro Chucker 5 is a five station progressive reloading press and you can see here we're using all five stations. I really like this reloading setup and it's actually quite similar to an AR-10 308 Winchester video that I did just a little bit back. Uh, but basically, we've got in station number one, so your sizing and depriming die. I've got a, an RCBS uh, TC223 sizer deprimer there. In station number two, I have the Reading Instant Indicator. Now, this is the kit from 308 Winchester, but as you'll see in the video, we can actually use this for 223 as well. What this is going to do is measure the brass overall length the brass trim length or the current the current value that it's stretched to after sizing that's an important detail when you size it it's going to lengthen just a little bit and the way that I've adjusted this is that if if the dial comes up to zero it's at the trim to length which is 1.750 inches we're still in range if we're within 10 which would be 1.760 inches I'm expecting most of the cases, uh, the actual brass, to be slightly less than that because these have been trimmed. What that means is I'm going to have to just visually validate at the top of the stroke. Then we've got our powder charge. We've got the new RCBS Uniflow updated for the Pro Checker series. We'll go over that in more detail in a separate video. In station number four, we've got the RCBS Powder Checker. This is going to raise the middle rod here so that we can get an indication of the powder level at the top of the stroke that should be even with this white o-ring right here so each time i'm at the top of the stroke i'm going to take a visual here yep we got powder we're, we're good there and i'm going to validate the trim to length i don't know about you guys but it's hard to keep track of which brass has been trimmed and i really like to go here uh, reasonably certain that it's all trimmed if something isn't right I'm gonna see it with my uh, instant indicator back here which is gonna save me a lot of hassle and a lot of time all right station number five we've got the Hornady bullet seating die for 223 I like this because I've got a micrometer on it it's got the sliding collar which helps the bullet get aligned correctly prevents the bullet from tipping and crushing overall this is a great setup you'll see how smooth this is this is a great press for loading 223 one of the most critical phases in the reloading process is going to be to have a proper setup of our sizing depriming die. Now I've learned recently just how important this is, especially with auto loaders, because with a progressive press that's got a large subplate under the shell plate, there is some flex there. So if you think you can just bottom out the die against the shell plate, it's not going to translate to that same die adjustment when the, when the subplate is getting flexed. So you're gonna actually have to bury the die a little bit further. Safe to do even with carbide dies, as long as you don't get carried away. On a single stage press, you can crack the sizing ring if it's, if it's carbide. Uh, but with a progressive press, if, if you're reasonable and if you're checking with a case gauge, you're gonna be good. Okay, so what I've got here is the, the Ellie Wilson 223 Remington case gauge. Uh, we're gonna use this for two things. We're gonna, we're gonna check the trim length, which we're also checking while, while we're, we're loading. Can see that uh, measurement right there we can see we're good there and then we're also going to validate the sizing die setup so what i did when i initially dialed this in is i sized a piece of brass you take the brass out and then you're going to drop it into the gauge now there's an upper step and there's a lower step and what you want is for the case rim to fall between the depth of the lower step and the upper step, and I can see that here. If you just touch the shell plate with the sizing die, you're gonna probably be poking up slightly because of that subplate flex that I mentioned. So you're gonna to need to incrementally crank it down so you're nicely uh, between the upper step and the lower step. Now you're sure of what you're doing. 
So let's go over the loading components and load data really quick. Really important safety note, I always keep a pad or a printout from a website like Hodgson's Load Data website that indicates exactly what I'm loading. The components, the weights, all of the details, cartridge overall length, and all of that. So what I'm loading today is I've, I've gone from the upper edge of the load data, the max load data, and backed it off slightly. I'm at 24 grains of Hodgson Varget, which is kind of my go-to powder for 223. Has performed really well, meters really well. I just really like that powder. I've got 22 caliber Hornady match hollow point bullets, 60 grain. And we're loading to the Hornady loading manual cartridge overall length specification of 2.200 inches. It's a little bit shorter because it's a hollow point, doesn't have that tip protruding that much further. And we're also using uh, federal small rifle primers. So these loading components should treat us well. I think it's time to start full progressive loading. Let's do it. All right, so let's run things up. I like to start nice and slow and deliberate. Okay, we've got our indications starting now. We're at five over. Remember we have 10 total leeway over trim length. So technically we're okay there, but uh, we're gonna wanna keep an eye on things. Negative four. It's good. Okay, now we can start to see the indication. So I'm going to read the overall length of the brass and the powder level. You can see it up there uh, level with the white O-ring, so that's good. And we need a bullet this time. Okay, so each time now, indication good, powder rod good. Now we got some ammo flowing. That's the sound I like to hear. Double check. Good, good, good. After a while here, get into a good rhythm. Brass, bullet. Check indications, good. We'll steadily be able to increase the speed at which we're loading. Go ahead and do a rundown now. And there we go. Well, there you have it. Now you know what it's like to load 223 Remington and other rifle cartridges on the RCBS Pro Checker 5. Now, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to check out what I'm doing on a recurring basis, please subscribe to my channel. Now, we're just getting started with rifle ammo on the RCBS Pro Checker 5, and we got RCBS Pro Checker 7 content coming up as well. So you're going to want to stick around, and we'll see you all later.